Hello, my name is Michael James. Uh, today I'm going to be making an olive, rosemary, and pink lake salt whole wheat focaccia. Using the beautiful ingredients from uh, Mountain Zero. So I have uh, green olives I'll be using, uh, the Kalamata olives. Uh, we have, uh, and today I'll be using the lemon oil to go inside the dough and also on top of the dough. There's also beautiful um, the pink leg salt, and we also have a, a choice of using the uh, oregano and uh, sea salt grinder to go on top. So we're use, so we're gonna, this is a whole wheat focaccia. It's normally, it's, uh, focaccia is traditionally like a, a white flour, you know, light and airy and fluffy. But today um, we're going to be using a local, a local flour from a company called Woodstock. Uh, and this is, the wheat's called Spitfire, so this is a whole, whole wheat flour. A much different texture, a much different finish than, than your normal white. But again, we will have a lot more, a lot more flavour and a lot more nutrition. We'll make this in a inside a, a pan, so don't worry about those being too sticky or um, hard to work with. It's very, very forgiving dough. So, so today we're going to mix the dough by hand. So we've got 600 grams of um, Spitfire whole wheat flour, and we're going to pour in some uh, six grams of instant dried yeast. And just mix that through, just with the tips of your fingers. Uh, next. We have water, so this is around uh, 20 degrees Celsius for the water. So just pour in, make a little well in the, in the middle of your flour, just over three quarters of the water. And then again, use your uh, your hands comes the mixer. So just use your use your fingertips to gradually um, combine the flour and water. So we're going to start to make the gluten form bonds, and then uh, what will happen then is that the yeast, once it starts to ferment, will give off gas, and so we'll try and we're aiming to build up strength to trap the gas to give us the nice air bubbles and air pockets in the bread. As you feel comfortable, just add more and more water. So I've got 500 uh, water inside, and I've also got another 50 grams to add if I feel like it needs it. Use your hands, just kind of scrunch it, massage it, bring up, bring all the flour and water together. Now, if you feel like you're getting too sticky or too messy, just uh, use a, a bench knife or a dough scraper. And this dough is feeling a little bit dry right now, so I'm just going to add. Add in a little more water. So this is 50, 50 mils of uh, water again. Again, this will take a quite a few. If you're mixing by hand, it will take a few, a few minutes to bring everything together. Uh, and this is the oil. To I'm using the, uh, the organic olive oil from Mount Zero. So this is 20, 20 mils of oil. So I'm just going to drizzle that on top. And again, just use my hands to incorporate the oil into the dough. This gives the dough again more flavour and like a nice kind of shiny waxy crumb as well when it, once it's baked. So again, don't worry about the dough being overly wet. This focaccia is going to be, this one will go into a tin or into a, a, a baking tray with, with sides to it. So it's, you know, you can just pour in your wet dough and then the tin can hold the dough shape more. So you don't have to worry about using flour or oil to, to shape the dough or make too much mess. Pour it into a tin and prove it up so it's quite forgiving in some ways. And a good way to start to get into baking as well, it's a good way for you're not to be too, too afraid of making sticky wet doughs. But again, you can do this on the bench. Um, just fine, keeping all the mess in one place helps. Yeah, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't want floury lumps, so make sure you, if you do come across any floury lumps, just kind of massage it out or, or rub, the, rub the lumps and break down the flour. If you do find lumps of anything, or salt or yeast, nice dough. It's quite sticky as well, so you can see visually it's a, uh, Sticking to me, it's quite quite sticky, which is good. So this this dough is going to go into um, a container now, or you can leave it into the bowl. Leave it in the bowl. It's covered with a tea towel as well, so it's very important to keep these doughs covered or in, in a container so it doesn't dry out. If you get dry spots on your dough, then you'll find that things just don't rise quite as nice. So what I'm going to do is transfer the the mixed uh, whole wheat focaccia dough into a into a container with a lid, oil to stop the dough from sticking and it makes it easier to fold as well. And transfer the dough into the, into the container, into the middle. So this, this will be rested now for a half an hour. It gets a rest so this will relax and again as I say the, the gluten will get stronger. We'll, so we get this three folds every half an hour and then it gets another half an hour rest before we transfer the dough into the container. Just a lid on top or you can use the tea towel. So after half an hour of resting um, the dough is ready for its first fold and the folding process is to basically build up strength in the dough, to mix the dough and also to, to regulate the temperature as well. So it might be cold day, it might be cold on, on the outside um, and just to also check the hydration as well. So I mean if the dough is feeling too dry at this stage or the whole wheat's sucked up too much uh, water so you can always use just some water on your hands. You can just pat or drizzle some water at this stage. 
Okay, once you're actually doing a fold, you can just use some oil, rub it in, and then this stops the dough from sticking whilst you do the folding. So, again, so you grab the end piece of the dough. So you can see the dough's starting to come together even after half an hour, this is starting to form a gluten structure, so you can see from the camera. Um, it will get stronger as we go along. So I grab the end piece of the dough, pull, stretch it up, put up over the middle. Again, repeat that all around the side of the dough. Stretch up and over. Stretch up over the, over the top of the dough. So you can see now it's starting to come together stronger again. So repeat that, do that two or three times. Again, keeping your hands uh, with water or oil. Stop, stop it from sticking as well. And then, so we'll rest this now for, uh, for another half an hour. So there'll be two more folds every half an hour and then there'll be a, a final half an hour rest. And then, then the dough will be transferred into the, uh, into the baking tray. Okay, so after two hours of um, folding and uh, final proof, so the dough is uh, ready to transfer to a, a baking tray. So the dough, as you can see here, has got a nice bobble to the dough. So you want to be looking for signs of um, fermentation. So bubbles is a great sign. You can see, so that mixing, initial mixing stage, which is what the yeast is given off the gas. So here we go. So we can see bubbles on top and be lots inside and the wobbly too, kind of like a jelly. So it's basically like a foam, a giant foam. I'm just going to use some oil into the, a uh, good glug of oil into the baking tray. Uh, and then I'm going to use um, my dough scraper or you can use your hands. You can wet your hands or again, drizz of oil, oil onto your hands. Transfer the dough into the pan. And then just kind of use the tips of my fingers and then just to guide the, the dough into the tin, into the corners. And then just put the oil on top of the dough. And feel free to use it for whatever oil you prefer at the stage, or olive oil, or lemon, or lime. Uh, and yuzu is excellent for for, um, for extra flavour for your dough. Here we go. So then, so this is going to go into a warm place again to to prove. So this could take anywhere between one hour to two hours to uh, signs of fermentation, which is bubbles in the dough, and also again, if you, when we shake the pan, it will have a little bit of wobble to the dough. Then, then that's that, at that stage, before it goes into the oven, that's when we add our toppings of choice. You can use whatever you want. Obviously today we're going to be using the beautiful green and black olives for Mount Zero and the herbs from the garden and um, some pink lake salt to go on top. That's going to be covered as well with a tea towel. And I'll leave that to, uh, to rest and also to rise and ferment. Preheat my oven to 230 degrees Celsius and give it a good Preheat for 20 minutes, half an hour, get that heat in the oven. Again, if you've got a pizza stone on the bottom, that's also great for generating lots of heat. So as you can see here, the dough is uh, nice and ripe and ready to go in the oven. So I've got good things going on here. I've got bubbles in the uh, dough popping up, as you can see. And if I shake the pan, again, it's got a little wobble to the, to the dough in the pan. Uh, I'm going to just um, use, I've got some lemon oil to go on top. So I'm just gonna drizzle oil onto my hands and onto the top of the dough. What I'm going to do then, just use my fingertips, again, which are nicely greased, and just uh, press into the dough. As you can see, the bubbles are, it's very act nice active dough, so lots of bubbles popping up. And then I just, I'm going to, today I'm going to use um, green and black olives, and just kind of press into the dough a little bit. I'm going to use um, some rosemary, just from the garden, but, um, and then some, some uh, pink lake natural salt, but you can also use, uh, a cheat's way, this is a beautiful um, pink lake salt mixed with uh, oregano, thyme and rosemary. So you could just uh, grind that on top of the dough. Do this any way you like or sprinkle it on top or chop it on top if you like. Last of all, the, um, the salt. Final drizzle, just a little bit more oil on top, just a good drizzle on top. And this, this will go into the oven, uh, 230 degrees uh, oven for around 22 to 26 minutes. I usually check it after uh, after about 20 minutes. So after around 25, 20, 26 minutes of bake time, the focaccia is ready. Whilst it's warm, I, I just drizzle my oil on top. So again, I'm gonna use uh, the lemon olive oil. One thing, I'm just leaving the pan just for a few minutes just to uh, cool down slightly, and then I'll transfer the, uh, the hot wheat focaccia onto a cooling rack just to let it cool. And then, you know, it's good to eat. Good to eat straight away, nice and warm. It's nothing like a nice, fresh, whole wheat focaccia that's just baked, the smells are amazing and, um, and, and then fresh bread.